I will be riding a bike with my small daughter. I would have said you are crazy. It will cost you maybe 350, 400 US dollars. And the food is different and what your baby will eat here you feel that they really enjoy spending time with your kid. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Olga and for the last 10 years I was living in Germany. But six weeks ago, me, my husband and our little daughter Emily moved to Bali and we plan to stay here at least till the end of the year, maybe even more. So in this video, I would like to tell you everything you need to know about traveling to Bali with small babies or with toddlers, because we have already gotten some experience I will tell you everything about food, transportation, entertainment for small kids and I will also be speaking a lot about how to find a babysitter or a nanny or a daycare for your kid and believe me you will need this one on Bali, I will tell you later in this video why. So if you are interested in one of these topics then watch this video to the end and if you want to see more content about life in Bali and also some content about fashion and self-development then subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about transportation. The one thing that you need to know about Bali, even if you don't have a baby, is that it is almost impossible to walk here, because there are no sidewalks in Bali. Yes, even if Google says that it only takes 10 minutes to walk to your destination, then you need to know that the road will be a road full of bikes and cars, there will be no sidewalk, so you have to walk like on the side and breathe in all the gas, all the pollution uh, from bikes and cars, which is not so nice, especially if you are with a baby. So if you want to get from point A to point B on Bali, the first option is to get a car. You can either rent your own car, but I have to say it is not very easy to drive a car by yourself in Bali because there are plenty of bikes on the streets. So when you are driving a car, you have to prepare that there will be some bikes on the left side, there will be some bikes on the right side. So most of the people don't feel comfortable driving a car here. But you can always order a taxi. It is very cheap to order one in Bali. In one of my vlogs, I've already shown you a Gojek app. It's like an Asian alternative to an Uber app where you can order taxis, bikes, food and so on. And yes, it is very cheap to order a taxi there. But the problem with taxis is that it takes very long to get from point A to point B with a car on Bali. Again, because of the bikes and because the streets are very narrow, so you will always stay in a traffic jam. We only use taxis or drivers. Yes, it is also quite cheap uh, to hire your personal driver for the whole day. We use cars only if we want to go far away, maybe to another city, maybe to some beach which is located far away from our home. But if we want to go to a cafe, if we want to take a walk on the beach and then come back uh, to our house, then we drive a bike. And yes, if somebody had told me a month ago or two months ago that I will be riding a bike with my small daughter, I would have said, you are crazy, I will never do it, it's too dangerous to ride a bike with a baby. But believe me, when you come to Bali, when you understand that it is very uncomfortable to go by, by car, when you see plenty of people riding bikes with their babies, you will get to the point where you will also try it. And that's what we did. So we have our own bike. I don't drive a bike, but my husband does. And we also have a nanny. I will talk later about our nanny in this video but she also has her own bike. So sometimes she takes Emily on a ride with her bike. We bought a baby carrier for our daughter. Our daughter is two years old and three months. So she is not a small baby, but here you can buy like a baby carrier, which is extra made for toddlers. So it is bigger than a classic baby carrier. But if you have a small baby, then you can use like the normal baby carrier. And what we do is that uh, my husband, 
takes our daughter on his back in this baby carrier and I sit like as a third person on the bike so that Emily is between us and we all feel very secure. Our nanny has a different way to ride a bike with Emily. She has a special seat for babies which she puts in front of her and then she also has a thing which is, looks almost like a carrier but it doesn't have this bottom part so you can only use it on the bike when your baby is sitting on something else you can't actually carry your baby in this thing it is also used like to attach your baby to your body so that you can be sure that it doesn't fall and of course our daughter also has her own helmet it is very important to use a helmet for babies, for toddlers, and also for yourself when you're driving a bike. Let's talk about food. If you are worried that it is Asia and everything is like very spicy and the food is different and what your baby will eat here, don't worry. First of all, if your baby needs some formula, there are plenty of different formulas here. If you have a toddler who is already eating normal food, you also don't have to worry because here in every supermarket you can buy just normal products. You can even buy the same European or American brands uh, of pasta, of rice, of milk products and so also everything is almost the same because Bali is very popular. There are plenty of vegetables here, also normal vegetables, cucumbers, tomatoes, bell peppers, everything you need for your baby. The quality of meat and fish is also very good here, so you don't have to worry uh, when you are buying fish or meat in a supermarket. I will not suggest you buying them on a local market, but if you are buying them uh, in some popular supermarket like Pepita, the quality is very nice, they are always fresh. We never had any problems with eating these products. And also, if you are going to a cafe, to a restaurant, there is almost always a kid menu. But yes, the kids menu normally offer mac and cheese, uh, fish and chips, so some not healthy things uh, which kids love. You can always ask to make something special for your kid, for example, just plain rice, plain pasta, boiled chicken, and they will always do it for you. So it's not a problem at all to get some proper food for your baby or your toddler here. Don't worry about that. Entertainment is also not a problem on Bali. First of all, there are plenty of different interesting safari parks, zoos and monkey forests. So like places where your kid can watch animals, uh, some places where he can even interact with animals. There are also plenty of playgrounds for babies, especially like kids centers where you have plenty of toys, where you have trampolines and so on. Many of them even offer like babies, local babysitting service. So if you want to go somewhere, for example, to a beach club only with your husband, you can leave uh, your child in this kids center. Uh, you just pay a little bit more. So there is like a babysitter who takes care of your baby that's also very popular here. If you are staying in Bali for a long time, there are plenty of different um, sport classes, dance classes, music classes for babies. These are normally for toddlers who are older than three years. Also, I have not found anything yet for my daughter because she is not three years old. But for older babies, there is a great selection of uh, different classes here. But now let's talk about my favorite topic, babysitter or nanny in Bali. Believe me, you will need a nanny or a babysitter here. First of all, it is very popular as many freelancers live here on Bali. So many people are working online from their home and they need someone to take care of their babies when they're working. But even if you don't need to work, there are so many beautiful places on Bali which are not very suitable for kids. There are beautiful waterfalls, there are beautiful rice terraces where it is quite difficult to walk with your kids, especially when you have small babies or toddlers. Believe me, you have to visit these places because they are so beautiful that you can't travel to Bali and not visit them. There are also many activities which are not suitable for toddlers or for babies, like jet skis, like quadricycles, like surfing and so on. 
and also here you want to try maybe not all of them but some of them and you have earned it you have earned also some time for you even if you are not a fan of any of these activities but someday you will want to go to a spa to get a Balinese massage at same day you will just want to have a dinner with your partner without a baby and you also need to spend some quality time alone with your partner so if you never had a nanny or a babysitter in your country Bali is the best place to try it for the first time and let me tell you what are the options to find a babysitter or a nanny here the first option is to try to find a nanny uh, from your country here so maybe if you need someone who has the same mentality as you who, who speaks the same language as you and if you are not comfortable hiring a local nanny then you will definitely find a nanny from your country here but these are first of all almost the most expensive ones and second of all if you need like a regular nanny then it is difficult in this case because uh, these international nannies normally work only on our basis and they also want to spend some time on Bali to visit some beautiful places to go surfing so they are only available like on particular days only for several hours and not like on regular basis uh, which you may need if you want to work from here for example I personally suggest you trying to find a local nanny and let me tell you why people in Bali adore children I have never seen so many people who love children it doesn't matter if they are women or men if they are young or old here everybody loves babies loves kids if you are walking on the street with your kid you will always get like plenty of attention from local people because they love kids so you directly feel this very kind energy you feel that they really enjoy spending time with your kid hiring a local nanny is also a great opportunity for your child to learn english if english is not his native language most of babysitters and nannies in bali speak not like the perfect advanced english but they speak quite good and that's totally enough for a toddler for a baby who has to learn just some new word so as i said we have spent six weeks here on bali and our daughter already understands english and she can already say some words in england in english which i think is great so maybe uh, till the end of the year she will be speaking english and i mean that's the best present which you can make for your baby that he or she doesn't have to learn english later in the future he will already learn it as a baby and will forget about learning it what i also love about balinese people about local nannies and babysitters is that they don't have this toy culture as we do in some western countries so normally we buy plenty of toys books games for our children we almost don't know how to play with a baby without having any toys and as local population in Bali is quite poor they don't have so many toys as we do and I think this is great because local nannies actually play with babies just in nature they go for a walk they show leaves they show flowers they show I don't know some animals here so they are just playing you know like we did when we were small we, we when we didn't have computers when some of us even didn't have some tvs when we didn't have like thousands of uh, dolls and cars and other toys in our houses and we just used our imagination to play that's what they do here on bali and i think that's a great combination like like you are playing with your baby using books toys and so on and your nanny or babysitter is just playing with him using imagination just in the nature with some flowers with some leaves showing stars showing sun moon showing some bugs and everything which you can find here on bali i think it's a great way to expand the way your baby thinks to expand this his imagination so i love their style of playing but of course there are not only pros there are some cons of having a balinese nanny and let me tell you about it let me first tell you what is the different difference between babysitter and a nanny 
So baby city is just a freelance lady who is looking for a job. So she can do like cleaning, she can do some other services for you and she can also stay with your baby. But she is not like a professional nanny. She is not a woman who is only working as a nanny. These babysitters are very cheap. So you only have to pay like 35,000 rupees an hour for this nannies. And if you want uh, to hire her for the whole month, it will cost you maybe 350, 400 US dollars. And uh, for a whole month, that means working six days a week, eight hours per day. So it is actually very, very cheap compared to the most other countries of the world. The problem with these nannies is that they always wait for you to tell them what they have to do. They are very kind, they are very polite. You always have to tell that, okay, now please feed her, now please play with her, this is close for her, put it on. And I mean, they will do everything you say, but if they are alone, it may be the case that they just stay and don't know what to do. And I don't feel comfortable leaving my baby with such a babysitter, with such a woman, uh, because I want to be sure that if something happens, she always knows what to do. She doesn't need to call me. She doesn't need to text me. So this cheap babysitters, may be an option for you if you are for example working from home and you only need someone to play with your baby also at home so in case something happens you will be there so you don't want to leave your baby with her alone in this case the babysitter may be a great option for you because it is very cheap but if you want to leave your baby alone with this woman if you want to go somewhere if you want to go away maybe even for the whole day I really suggest you hiring not a babysitter, but a qualified nanny. Qualified nanny means that it is a nanny who is working only as a nanny, who has many years experience working as a nanny, who has done some first aid classes, who has done some swim trainer classes, which is quite useful here on Bali because normally you have a pool on your villa. So her profession is a nanny. Of course, it is more expensive than a babysitter. So if you want to take her on an hour basis, you have to pay 70 to 80,000 rupiah per hour. But if you want to hire her for the whole month, that's what we do. We have like a regular nanny. She comes six days a week, eight hours per day. And uh, in this case, you have to pay like seven to 800 US dollars. Yes, that's almost twice as much as when you hire a babysitter. But in this case, you will feel 10 times more secure if you leave your baby with her. Our nanny, her name is Faride, is like, she's like a big mommy, you know? She knows what to do with the baby. She has 13 years experience working as nanny. And I know that if my baby is hungry, if my baby is cold, she will always know what to do. She will not call me. She will not text me. She will always prepare some food. She will find some other clothes. If my baby needs to go to a shower, she will wash him. She will bed him. She will not ask me if she can do it or how she can do it or what soap she needs to use. She knows everything by herself. And she always has plenty of ideas what she can do with the baby so on one day she brought some balloons and she was making these dog balloons for her on another day she brought some uh, nail polish and they were polishing nails on some days she's even reading books with her she's learning some new words in english ones with her on some days she takes her on her bike uh, to a playground to a kids center and they are spending the time there um, on other days, she, I don't know, she, they are trying to find some frogs in here. So, so she always finds some cool, funny entertainment for my daughter and my daughter loves her. So when I pay this seven or eight hundred dollars, I mean seven or eight hundred dollars for a regular nanny is still not much compared to most European countries, compared to Australia, compared to USA. You actually have like a very kind, nice and very responsible and that's, that's the most important thing on Bali, a very responsible person who takes care of your baby. So yes, how you can find a babysitter or a nanny? Of course, the best way is that you have someone uh, who can recommend you a nanny which he or she were using. 
but this is, this is not always the case. For example, we didn't have any friends here on Bali who had a nanny. If you are staying in a hotel, uh, you can always ask hotel uh, staff to find you a babysitter. They will do it and they normally have good ones. But if you are having your own private villa, if you have some staff working on your villa, which is normally the case, you can ask the staff if they know some babysitters, some nannies. But the most popular way is just to find an agent who is working with nannies and who can find a nanny for you. Of course, you have to pay a commission for such an agent, but uh, I mean, they have access like to this professional nannies, which I was talking about. We were using such an agency to, to organize like the whole trip for us, to organize our visas, to find a villa for us, to find a driver for us. And they also found a nanny for us. But if you are not using this agency, you can just write in one of the Facebook groups. You have, have watched a video where I made a room tour of our villa. If not, I will link it somewhere here. I have already told there that Facebook is a great place to find anything you want here on Bali. On Facebook, you have some local groups of the city of the area of Bali, which you are staying in, where you can make a post and say what you want. I am searching for a villa or I am searching for a nanny. And believe me, on the same days, at least 10 to 20 agents will contact you directly and say that they have access to plenty of nannies. So, and they will help you find some. Of course, I will advise to get to know this nanny at least one time, to invite her to make like a trial day and not uh, to hire someone directly for the whole month. That's what we did. So we uh, got to know our nanny in person before hiring her. There are also some websites which are made for finding babysitters and nannies. I will link them down below. But I think Facebook is actually the best opportunity uh, because the same agents uh, which you can find on this website will just uh, contact you directly when they see your post on Facebook. The last topic which I want to talk about is daycares and schools for your babies. And there are plenty of daycares here on Bali. If you are traveling to Bali for a longer period, because if you want to get to a daycare, then normally they want you to stay with them at least for five weeks. Then I also suggest trying a daycare. Our daughter was not going to a daycare in Germany because we didn't get a place there yet. So I was quite worried how it will be here because she doesn't speak English, because she was never in a daycare, because she has never seen so many kids, but she loved it from the first day because when she saw plenty of toys, when she saw a playground, when she saw plenty of other kids, and again, the babysitters in the daycares are also very kind. They love babies. So they directly, you know, do something to entertain her, get her interest. So she loved the daycare from the first day. Our daycare cost us 450 US dollars per five weeks which I think is a great price. So maybe if you are not comfortable hiring a babysitter or a nanny, then a daycare may also be an option for you. But I think it is great to have both of them. So there is a daycare where, you can, where your kids can meet other children, where he can play with them. And also you have a nanny, uh, which you can use like on a weekend, which you can use in the evening if you want to have some dinner. And daycares are normally closed in the evening. So yes, I think uh, it's great to have like a combination of both of them. Uh, that's what we do. I think that's everything I wanted to tell you. That was a lot of information. If this video was helpful for you, then please support me with your thumbs up. If you have any questions to Living in Bali, then feel free to write them in the comments and I can answer them in my future videos. If you are new to my channel, then I will be happy if you subscribe to it, not to miss the next videos. And I will see you very soon. Bye bye.